You ready to open this? All right, we just got our new helmet. We're gonna do a little unboxing here, see if this fits. So we ordered this helmet from Revzilla. I've never used this company before, as this is the first thing related to a bike I've ever purchased. Had mixed reviews when I read online about this company, but I'll tell you what, I mean, from my experience, everything went flawless with the shipping. It took two days from the day they actually sent it out. Looks like they sent us some pretty badass stickers. What do you think about these? So we even got something for the kids. Here we go, you ready? Oh. We got the Bell MX-9 Adventure MIPS DLX helmet. The Adventure helmet, it's more of a mix between going out using a dirt bike and a normal bike. That's why I went with this. I'm gonna be using this actually on an e-bike and some people might think this is overkill, but the bike can go up to 30 miles per hour. So what's most important? It's coverage on the head. And one of the things that appealed to me about this helmet, and we'll see once we get it out of the uh, packaging here, was that this one actually has the transition visor. Uh, so that's pretty awesome to see. I'm not gonna have to worry about switching out the actual visor. You'll probably notice just from the exposure of this video, we have clouds and everything constantly coming in and out. So. You never know what you're dealing with. Whoa. So this thing looks pretty serious. It's pretty awesome looking. What do you think? I was telling you guys this is the, if this has the MIPS technology, you heard that from the name. Uh, there is this uh, yellow that you'll see on the inside of the helmet and that actually moves around so that if you do take an impact, you have a crash or anything, the inside of the helmet is actually supposed to move slightly. Um, so that it doesn't twist your head as bad. And so the MIP stands for Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. Uh, my head is about 22 and a half inches around, so I ended up going with the medium size helmet. I'm not sure how that's gonna fit. Nice thing I've read at least about Revzilla is if for some reason this doesn't fit too well, uh, I can actually send it back in, no charge. They'll pay for the shipping so that we can get the uh, right helmet size. We're gonna get this thing unstrapped. I can already tell you I'm not crazy about the strap. All right, here we go. You ready? We're gonna put this on you. <laughs> oh! Man, if that can't go on you, I don't know how it's gonna go on me. And there we go, can you hear me? That's squeezing the cheeks. Okay. That's gonna take some getting used to. But you can see we got the visor here, sun visor, which is detachable. I think it makes it look pretty cool though. Uh, we got our visor. Not that we're gonna have to worry about this too much going at speeds of 30 miles per hour, but we need to get that extra airflow in. We can, we also have uh, three different areas where air can come into this one. We actually have the big mouthpiece right here that's gonna let uh, some ventilation in. And then you got the two sides. On the back, we've got the exhaust so that air can pass right back through, but which out these cheek pads, like everything detaches in this. Yeah, it looks like I can just pop these right out here. So in case you wanna wash them. I guess the only thing I'm not crazy about on this helmet out of everything is just the chin strap. All right, it's time that we do the crash test. You gotta get the mini bat. Oh! Oh! All right, so let's continue with the unboxing here. The one selling point on this one that really uh, got me interested in reading more on this helmet uh, was the fact that um, on this one, and I read you guys the model of this, uh, the MX-9 Adventure MIPS DLX. Well, that DLX uh, has to do with this lens here. Uh, this is a transitions lens. So the nice thing is, is you have clear or dark depending on your lighting conditions. And I've read some really great reviews on that. So I'm excited to be testing that out once I start using this. Uh, the point of this helmet is gonna be for an e-bike. I've got a Super 73 on the way, it's been pre-ordered. Not really sure when it's gonna show up, which means I might be able to just wear this thing to bed for a while, ride it around town on the skateboard or something. 
it could seem overkill to some people. I've seen a lot of people uh, wearing different style helmets, you know, just the, the normal helmet style, but uh, I wanted to go with full coverage, because something that's actually like DOT rated, which this is, this is DOT and uh, ECE rated, because you can't trust the other drivers out there. I'm in Florida, we got crazy drivers down here, and at the end of the day, you know, I just gotta look out for myself and my family by having the good coverage. This e-bike can go up to 30 miles per hour, so, I mean, that's pretty fast. Uh, in terms of being on the road with other cars and you just can't trust other people. So that's why I wanted to go with something full coverage. Mouthpiece, it looks like this one can actually uh, open and close. Uh, these are fixed, they're open, so who knows what'll happen with water on that. So we're back, I am outside. I've had the helmet now a couple weeks. I was waiting on some new uh, cheek pads to come in, which did. So uh, what comes stock on uh, this Bell MX-9 helmet is actually the 40 millimeter cheek pads, which if you guys saw when I put the uh, helmet on my face originally, you could see how much it was pushing up on my cheek. Ooh, that's squeezing the cheeks. So I wanted to just show you guys, um, I now have the 30 millimeter, and I will show you a comparison of the thickness on these, but what I wanted to do was actually just show you uh, what it looks like now on my cheek area, and also uh, show you the transition part of this lens um, without it being clear, so just standing out in the direct sunlight. So you can see I got the helmet on now. We got the uh, actual transition part of this helmet here. Uh, we got the part it flips up, and I want to show you guys like what it actually looks like on the cheeks. So if you want to see now, with the actual 30 millimeter, there is not as much of the pinching on the cheek area. All right, so I want to wrap up this video by showing you guys uh, what I did with the stock cheek pads that came with the Bell MX-9 and what I ended up buying. So when I put the helmet on, as you guys already saw, I squeezed my cheeks. I just felt a little bit more pressure. I had seen a couple people mention that they can break in a little bit. Just a chance I wasn't willing to take. I didn't want to be in that much discomfort if I'm gonna be wearing this helmet in the heat of Florida. Um, so what I got here is the uh, right cheek pad that came, actually, let's see, yep. The uh, right cheek pad, uh, which is a stock 40 millimeter. See if that zooms in. So that's the 40 millimeter that comes with the helmet. What I ended up doing, and I'm gonna show you guys. So here's the helmet. You got your cheek pads right here on the edges and they're just, they just snap. All right, so they're just little, the little red dots there actually snaps. And if you look at the helmet, you can see uh, where they actually uh, get put in there. All right, so leave our uh, helmet right up here. And what I wanted to show you is we got our 30 millimeter and we got our 40 millimeter right here. And in terms of the size difference, just so you guys can see that, obviously the 30 millimeters on top, just a lot thinner, it's not as boxy. Um, it, <laughs> It's just overall a lot better. So these cheek pads, they actually come in a 40, a 35, and a 30. The 40 for some reason is the one that comes stock and I'm not really sure on the reason for that. I wish it was something where they uh, made it where it was a choice, it was an option. Because unfortunately, I had to hunt down the 30 millimeter and I didn't know if it was 35 or 30, how big of a difference. If you look close enough, you might see that there's probably about a 10 millimeter difference. So it took about two weeks to get it, but it finally came in, it's the right size, it fits, it works perfect. And I'm gonna tell you this right now, if you get this helmet and you go through the same issue with the cheek pads, you're gonna have a lot of trouble finding this 30 millimeter, unless you can find some type of a third party uh, manufacturer or somebody that actually has it in stock. But most people that have the 30 millimeter are gonna be international sellers if you live in the United States. So overall, this one ended up costing me, I wanna say close to $30 to get this thing shipped to me uh, along with the actual product. $30, add that onto the price that I paid for the helmet. It was, a, it was an extra expense that unfortunately I had to pay just to make this helmet feel right. But hope you guys got something out of this uh, helmet review. I know it was very basic. I just hit on some of the things that were important to me on the helmet. And at the end of the day, what I'm concerned about is the drivers coming up from behind me while I'm on the road in that bike lane on a bike that's gonna be reaching anywhere from 30 to 34 on the max 
speed. So that's the miles per hour, by the way. Uh, but anyways, hope you guys got something out of this and I'll see you guys on the next video.